Upton's 100% league record at the Dell this season came after an amazing finish. The score was still one all with five minutes to go when Spurs keeper Ray Clement saved a penalty from his old Liverpool teammate Kevin Keegan. And then with just seconds remaining, 18-year-old substitute Pat Corbett got the winner with his first touch of the ball. Two worthwhile quotes from that match. First, young Corbett, who said, that's what you call an inspired substitution. And then Southampton manager Laurie McMenemy, who commented, Ray Clements is the best signing Spurs have made for a long time. If anyone was going to beat us today, it was him. You may remember Laurie wanted to sign Clements himself, but didn't have the ready money at the time. By the way, Keegan's penalty miss was his first failure in six attempts this season. Top marksman in the first division today was Cyril Regis with his second hat-trick of the season as well. The first leg of a second round League Cup tie between Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester United. Now there's no question that this match promised something very special. For a start, the two teams knocked in eight goals between them in the league last Saturday. And it's well remembered that they met in this same League Cup competition at the same stage in 1979 and the first leg was made memorable by this goal. And Rodman Ardid is well forward. Here's Huddle. There's Ardiles. There's Huddle! Oh, it's Oh, it's a brilliant goal! Despite Hoddle's brilliance, it was United who went on to the third round. And tonight, as David Coleman tells us, it was United who captured all the pre-match headlines by fielding their new man, Britain's costliest footballer. Brian Robson, whose signature cost Manchester United one and a half million pounds. Now tonight, wears those famous colours for the first time at the start of a six-year contract. After United's 5-0 win over Wolves, Robson's inclusion was by no means certain. The Ron Atkinson selection problem was solved overnight when Remy Moses developed an ear infection and Robson wears the number 11 shirt. Spurs, after what Keith Bergenshaw called their best performance of the season when they beat Forest 3-0, have the Argentinian Ricky Villa back at number five after injury. Young Mike Hazard, who took his place so effectively and scored such a marvellous goal, is now himself injured and the number 12 jersey goes to Giorgio Mazza. The referee, Mr. Brian Stevens of Stonehouse in Gloucestershire, just looking at the linesman, checking his watch as well, and it will be Manchester United to kick off. United now in fourth place in the league. While Spurs match them so closely, they're fifth, the same number of points. A match that both managers say should be a titanic clash. Gary Bailey, who's kept a clean sheet for the last five matches for United. Bertels Flick, that's Miller. Hewton. Giving Ray Clements a touch, and Ray Clements, by the way, informed himself, he's kept the sheet clean for the last three matches. Hewton. Robson's first touch for United. Martin Buchan, Ray Wilkins, getting back to the sort of form that made him England's best player in the European Championship Finals. Bertels, number seven, Stevie Coppy. Very hard and swift tackle by Steve Perriman, the captain. And there's the first corner of the match conceded by Miller. Paul Miller, married just two weeks ago and in fact uh, the referee has decided it was an infringement and a free kick given Sardinus the Spurs midfield in fine order in recent matches orchestrated of course by the Argentinians Ardilis and Villa Very, very high and long ball by Bailey. And had the Spurs defence in trouble, that's Bertels. Ardilis. Challenged by Stapleton, Ardilis again. And the Spurs defence, looking to say the least, a little bit untidy. Well, this time we do have the first corner of the match to be taken by Ray Wilkins. United pushing players forward. Flick there by Bertels, and touch somebody in over the top. Oh, that was an astonishing incident. The flick was there, it hit somebody in the goal line. 
Wilkins corner knocked down and then it squirted away over the top of the bar look at it from another angle and it was Stevie Coppel there in the end succeeded in hooking it over the bar and Kevin Moran number five turns in despair Huddle. Pushing going on, Gidman finally stopped. The attacker, Tony Galvin. And Galvin has ho hobbled off to the uh, touchline for treatment. Or rather, it's Mark Fal uh, Falco has gone off, yes. Falco has gone off for treatment, he took a knock then. Roberts. Again. Archibald stopped by Wilkins. Number five is Moran. Gidman. They are persisting and stopped by Moran again. Stapleton battling hard and unfairly. And uh, Falco is really uh, limping. He's being helped into the tunnel and into the subs uh, bench there. And Mazen, the sub, is warming up. Hewton's kick. Well, he started to come and stopped. Now, oh, Bia. Robson. Oh, finding his man Wilkins well. Stapleton checking on the forward players. And it looks as if in the first few minutes, Spurs are going to lead, lose their leading scorer of the season, young Mark Falco. Because the sub, Giorgio Mazen, appears to be ready to come on. Wilkins, Robson, Wilkins again, Gidman spare, Hewton missing it all together, but Roberts didn't, and there's the opportunity for the substitution, and uh, 12 and a half minutes gone, and Spurs lose their leading scorer, young Mark Falco, he did have a knock on Saturday, taking another tonight and that a real blow to Tottenham Hotspur Huddle McElroy and what a contrast with Saturday those were going in Wilkins oh what good play marvellous play by Wilkins and that taken out by Roberts and that was important because behind him was Steve Cobble Ray Wilkins, after a disastrous season last year through injury, really back to his best. Beer. Ardilis. Calvin. Stopped by Robson. Ardilis again. Beer. Huddle. Good skill again. Stopped by Bucket. Lots on to McElroy. United looking for a quick break. The Spurs with lots of defenders back. Gidman. Bertels. Certainly Manchester United in possession. Build up very, very quickly when they can. Huddle. Archibald. Fear. Galvin trying to get behind the defender, but the ball too long. Apology from Glenn Hardall, but he's made uh, such an impression on this match already in these first 16, 17 minutes. Stapleton. Went out anyway. Perryman. Ardiles. 
Archibald. Huddle leaving it. Ardilis. Galvin. Via. Hewton. Back to Ardilis. Ray Wilkins had an arm Miller. Ardilis. Via. Miller again. Huddle. Buzz of expectation, but that was fairly orthodox. There was nothing else on. Galvin trying to run his man and gets the corner. So Spurs at first corner of the match. Manchester United have had three. seeming to sort themselves out for this if, if they're looking for some uh, special and well-rehearsed ploy. That's our dealers. Well, they got a rather surprising corner out of it. If it had been left, it was no danger at all. Galvin once more, Robs, and there, the corner count equalised with three in a minute, all from the same side for Spurs. Ardenas, Robs, Brian Robson, who settled down very well in his new colours. Galvin, Mazen, hardly touched the ball so far. Now Villa, stopped by Wilkins. Archie Ball just screened the ball well, but I think uh, he was... Uh, a bit lucky to get that against Moran because he was backing on and Moran had no choice. But anyway, Moran was penalised. That's Hoddle. Robson. Via. Oh, he can be so dangerous from there. And there's the skill of the Argentinian and also the confidence of a man in form. The ball came back out to him, chested it down, and without a second thought, hit it right on target. Oh, Manchester United breaking quickly. Couple. Oh, the centre was a bad one. Pulled back too far. Takes the pressure off Spurs. Mazen. Right through Buckens tackle. Huddle. Archibald. Ardilas. Hewton. Oh, what a good try for the number two. And Spurs are really coming to life. The ball that laid across there, Hewton pushed it forward and hit it supremely well. Flick by Stapleton. Ben Huddle. Oh, well, he can't hard do this to the inch. Just committed the tackler, that's Galvin breaking, and he's there first, and Bailey was a bit lucky then. Ardilis threaded that through beautifully. Galvin was running, the defence square, Bailey did not get there, but the ball hit his legs. 30 minutes gone, Spurs fourth corner, Galvin took it. Bertel's header. Newton. Took a knock and Beer tried to chip the empty goal. And a free kick given anyway to Manchester United. Ricky Beer saw the goalkeeper off the line. Bailey came out and actually damaged that million and a half pound player, Brian Robson, in his first match. Look at the clash here as Bailey goes in, and I think that's Robson that he hit. Anyway, both players are all right, although Robson's feeling it a bit. 
Alderston. Frank Stapleton into a load of trouble. He took a knock as well. Ardilas, a rare booking for him. I think if we have a look at that, it was more of a mistimed thing than a really intended foul. And our dealers for that has been booked. And they are protesting there. Steve Perryman, the captain, our dealers alongside him. For the Argentinian's name goes in Mr. Stevens' book. Ray Wilkins here with a knock. Mike Duxbury warming up as Ray Wilkins is getting treatment. Now, it's Stapleton who got the knock here. Let's see in the picture if we can see what happened to Wilkins. Stapleton is now up and about. Uh, Wilkins there goes down in the corner of the shot. Meanwhile, play restarts, and it's a goal kick, two scores. And some trouble off the ball. Villa and Gidman. And Gidman had a clash with Villa. There was certainly possibly a knock exchanged. And the referee didn't see it, and it doesn't appear the linesman saw it either. It was off the ball, but there was a moment's flurry then, and both players could have been in serious trouble. Robertson looks at Bailey. Wilkins. Bertels, McElroy, Alberston, flicked by Carpel, that's Bertels, on for number four, Wilkins who's onside, and they get a corner out of that. Again, Bertels involved in that move, move in two places. Ray Wilkins showing no signs of the knock, or perhaps it was cramped. Certainly he's moving very freely now. Gary Bertels, really is showing signs that he's got his confidence back and he's full of running. I just couldn't hit that and it was right through the couple and surely there must have been uh, somebody pushing there and in fact somebody got in his way, he's complaining to the defenders. And what happened here? A corner taken, Clements went for it and it's his own defender in the way. Total lack of understanding. Certainly Clements gave him his marching orders. Robson uh, out jumped by Ardenas, and there's Hoddle. And the whistle's gone. Foul given, free kick taken, but not accepted by the referee, who's decided it is half time anyway. And the teams leave the field goalless, but that has been an entertaining first 45 minutes. There's been lots of skill, some very sharp tackling indeed, a lot of pace. And Glenn Hoddle wearing number 10. Well, Jimmy Greaves described him last weekend as a thoroughbred, and he does look the part. Not uh, yet reached England stature, but surely it's only a matter of time. Prompted, of course, in the midfield by Villa there, number five, and Ardenas. Meanwhile, for Manchester United, some impressive play, especially from Ray Wilkinson. United, when they attack quickly, are attacking with authority. And it's certainly true, too, to say that they had the best chance of the match. And it's well worth having a look at how they escape. And it was Steve Coppel who prevented his own side from scoring. The player hidden, I believe, here with a header is Stapleton. But watch what happens. Coppel tries to hook it in, hooks it over the top, and it was going in anyway. And Kevin Moran can't believe it's happened. And Spurs kicking off at the start of the second half. And perhaps there may be a significant change. It's too early to tell, but it looks to me as if they've dropped Mazen back. He's been ineffective as a striker, brought on in place of the injured Mark Falco, who's got a damaged left ankle, we're told. And Mazen appears to have been pulled back into the midfield. He is a defender, in fact. And he's taken up a, a position on the left side of the centre of midfield, with Villa playing up front alongside Archibald. There's Villa, we went through Michael Royce, he didn't exist. Galvin. Ardenas, play waved on, the referee recognised the foul though, by Gidman, Mazen. Ardenas.
good kick by Bailey. Hewton, oh, he almost dummied into trouble. Bertels has got behind him quickly. Galvin to Archibald. Ball's kept in by Gidman. This is Stapleton. Got it through well to Wilkins. On to Bertels, but stopped by Roberts. Bertels was just behind Roberts. Good flick, Robson. All oh, right at the edge of the box. The referee right behind him, though, and not interested. Robson uh, was right at the edge of the box when he was brought down. Good flick there by Stapleton. Robson goes straight into the box, and it certainly looks as if he might have been fouled on the edge anyway. Paul Miller. It's McElroy to Bucken, to Wilkins. Alveston. Moran. John Gidman. Hurtles. Wilkins. Moran looking to his captain, Bucken. Changing his mind. Robs. Gidman. Stapleton to Bertels and stopped by Ardilis. Galvin and into trouble and the player penalised. Brian Robson. And Brian Robson gets a booking in his first match for the club. One and a half million pounds. And at the start of the second half, is every move, of course, being scrutinised. The start of this second half, his first match in Manchester United Colours, his name goes in the book. Mazen's header, Veer. Split by Stapleton to Bertels, that's Mazen. Hoggle, Perryman. Veer. Bucken. Kevin Moran to Ray Wilkins. Kidman. Koppel. Kidman. Roberts, uh, Mas Roberts, not much going right for the substitute, Giorgio Mazen, Skidman, Bertels, he squeezed back that so well, what a good save, as Stapleton played that down, and Clements showed his England player still there, and Bertels injured now, but how he got the ball back I do not know. Look how little space he'd got in the end. He was right at the dead ball line. The cross was good. It beat the defender, but Stapleton just couldn't beat the diving Clemens, who got down very, very quickly. And meanwhile, Bertels had gone crashing to the ground. What a shame if Gary Bertels has got to knock that damages him permanently or puts him out for some time, because he really has come back to the sort of form he showed with Nottingham Forest before his transfer. Bertels being treated as the referee wants play to go on. Meanwhile, Mike Duxbury is warming up. Free kick given by Wilkins. A couple. Rops. And the new man over the top. But there was an interesting decision there because I'm sure Butch Wilkins did not put that in the quadrant, so it couldn't have been a corner. In fact, Bertels' cross may not have counted because the referee may have given a foul or Butch Wilkins may have taken it from the wrong place. Perryman to Miller. Manchester United still with only 10 men on the field, but Bertel's almost ready to get back on. Oh, Stapleton and 
Miller's error rescued by Roberts. Miller again. Bertel still hobbling up the touchline, trying to keep moving. Hewton. Roberts. Archibald. Trying to find Beer. Gidman. Got what he wanted. And Bertels gets back on the field. And as Bertels goes back on, the news of Mark Falco is that he's been taken to hospital. He's got a damaged left ankle. He's gone there for x-ray. And we've heard now he's been kept in overnight, we believe. So injuries to Spurs strikers continue. Keith Birkinshaw must be pleased with the performance tonight. But indeed, both managers have got reason to be pleased. Still, it's another problem for him. Garth Crooks injured before the season started, and Bertels is in real trouble. He's not going to stay long here. He's got to go off. He's signalling to the bench, and he's gone down. And just when he was recovering his best form, Bertels has got a, a knock that clearly has left him in tremendous pain. He tried to run then, and just could not. Concerned Ron Atkinson. Mike Duxbury will be on. Stevie Cott will bring you the messages back out. It's, uh, Mike Duxbury, captain of the youth team, captain uh, of the uh, Central League reserve side. And this season, almost a permanent substitute. A very uh, gifted young player. Gary Bertels has got a real problem. So this could be a second man on the way to hospital in this match. It's not been vicious, it's not been dirty. It certainly has been sharp on occasions, but no more than you'd expect. So Duxbury goes on, and it will mean possibly a reshuffle for Manchester United. Because Bertel's playing as an out-and-out -out front player, replaced now by a man who's gone into the midfield, and it looks as if Koppel will stay as a striker. Koppel, who's been shuttling up and down in a wide position, first on the right and then on the left. Spent more time on the right than the left, but I think he'll stay up front now as Stapleton. Miller. Koppel. McElroy. Stapleton. Robson on to Alderston. Duxbury. Gidman. Uh, Robson's gone charging through the middle, but the ball delayed too, so, too long. Moran. It's Robson. Gidman. Stopped by Roberts. Via. Ardinas. Via. Uh, Matson, who holds his head in despair. Nothing will go right for him. Huddle. Archibald. Couldn't find the space to lay it back to Huddle, who was waiting. Stapleton. Moran to Gidman. Huddle to Archibald. Moran. Bucket to Alberston. Wilkins. Couple. Wilkins. Bucket. Moran. Stopped by Mazen. He found Ardenas. Archibald breaking. He's got Beer there. And it's in the net. They've got the goal. Steve Archibald's first goal of the season. And Gary Bailey just could not take all the pace of the ball. Mass found Ardenas. Ardenas right through. He had Beer available. Changed his mind. Hit the shot well. And Beer.
Bailey couldn't hold it. And so Archibald's first goal of the season, after being Spurs' leading scorer last year, could be a vital one in this first leg of the League Cup. He hesitated, hesitated, then decided he'd have to shoot. And Bailey just could not hang on. There was a moment when it looked as if it might go over the top. But Gary Bailey will feel, I suppose, that was down to him. But the goal will go to Archibald, and Spurs lead by 1-0. Sixty-five minutes gone. Gidman for Manchester United. Duxbury. Stapleton. Adilis to Roberts. Via. Number nine, Galvin. Robson involved in two tackles there. Finally did enough to leave Manchester United in the back. That was Kidman back to Moran. Wilkins. McElroy. Played back by Huddle to Archibald, who was clearly onside. The shot always rising too high. Two and a half minutes have ticked away now of injury time, which, although Bertels was uh, attended to twice on the field, is beginning to seem excessive. Stuxbury, Gidman. Newton's header. Galvin. Veer with the throw. Veer who hasn't quite looked so happy in the second half of the striker's role as he was in midfield in the first half. This time it's in the crowd. So we've now had three and a half minutes of injury time. Via. It's Miller with Perryman waiting. Huddle. Stopped by McElroy. That's Perryman. There's that handball, but it, uh, play goes on. And the final whistle goes, and Spurs go into the second leg with a goal by Archibald, the difference between the team. His first goal of the season, and Gary Bailey had to choose tonight uh, to miss out on saving that, he spun off his hands into the net, and so for the first time in six matches, he concedes a goal. Ray Clements, on the other hand, well, he came here with a clean sheet in three matches, as he trots a lonely figure up the field. Clements now has gone four matches without conceding a goal. Whether one goal will be enough, we'll have to wait and see, but a match that started on a note of very, very high quality, especially for the first hour, but in the end, that petered out rather. Spurs at one, Manchester United nil. The news of the injured players, Mark Falco to stay in hospital overnight after x-rays in his left ankle, and Gary Bertels a very badly swollen right knee. Well, Ron, you put uh, Britain's most expensive uh, footballer on the field, but lost another million pound player tonight, and Gary Bertels, how bad is it? Well, um, I think we'll get a clearer picture tomorrow. It's, uh, it's more of an impact blow than a twist. You know, I, my first thought was when I saw him go down, he probably twisted his knee ligaments, but uh, there's a possibility it may just be a bang on the knee that's, you know, once the swelling's gone down, and we, we'll get a clearer picture of it. And he really is beginning to play now, isn't he? Well, I, I don't think there's been, ever been any question about his ability. Um, I think, he, you know, the fact that he hadn't scored obviously sapped his confidence. 
He's got his confidence this season by playing well and by scoring, and as you say, he's a very, very good player. Now, Brian Robson, a million and a half. You had to put him on tonight anyway, didn't you? Selection problem solved, but you must be well satisfied with him. Yeah, well, I mean, he's the sort of player, um, what a player to have to bring in for a lad to make his debut. Um, you know, you put him on, you don't worry about players like him, do you? I mean, they're good players. The goal, uh, Gary Bailey, well, five clean sheets, and that has to happen. Mm. He's had a super season. He's held his hand up uh, in the dressing room. You know, he's made uh, a very bad mistake, but, you know, the kid's a young kid. At the Arsenal, for instance, the other week, he, he made a save that kept us in the game, and that seems to even itself out. You know, that's, that's probably his first mistake of the season, I would think. Well, it's true that that Gary Bailey mistake did decide the game, but the difference between winning it and losing it was so slight because the match turned on two incidents in that same goal mouth, fortunately, right under the nose of our cameraman. The first, strangely, would have gone in if Steve Koppel hadn't decided to give it a helping hand. And Moran there, the anguish <laughs> that his gestures represent are only too clear. But the next one, I don't think, would have gone in if Gary Bailey hadn't given it a helping hand. Archibald shot here, incidentally, outside the box. 25 goals he got last season, all inside. That one was outside, but you can see... Well, I reckon that ball was going over the top. I'm not saying he didn't have to have a go for it, uh, but on the other hand, uh, he virtually made a goal out of a shot that might have gone over the bar. Well, so much of the result, which United must feel, gives them at least an even chance in the replay. But I have a funny feeling they'll regret tonight more for the loss of Gary Bertels just coming back to form than for the loss of that one goal. It was a, a brilliant cross, really, off his right foot. I know people think professional players should use equally each foot equally well but he was really struggling when he beat this man here to get the ball over and as Roberts tackles him bravely he crashes it for Stapleton to volley it really well and Clements to bring off a fine save that was one of the, the best bits of football of the whole evening but sadly as you see Bertels on the floor I have a strange and sad feeling that he's going to be out for some time. Well, as for Brian Rob Robson's debut, there's hardly really anything worth showing again, I'm afraid, but he was in the game on 33 occasions. Of his 15 passes, mostly straightforward, 12 were accurate, he won three out of six of his tackles, had three fouls against him, and, and a name take, and both his shots were off target. His inspiration for United seems to be in frightening the life out of his midfield colleagues. On Saturday, Sammy McElroy scored a hat-trick, and tonight, Butch Wilkin showed more than a flash of his very best form, including this bit of magic. I don't know whether you've seen a player do this before. It's nodded down to him now. There he is on the right wing, and watch what happens. He does a back heel with his right foot, a turn to the left, and leaves his opponent totally bemused. A little bit of magic that was worth the money on its own. Well, finally, in case Spurs think I've ignored them completely, let me get Ozzy Ardias out from under a booking. The pictures coming up now show very clearly that it was Roberts and not Ardias who caused Stapleton so much agony. There's Stapleton on the ball, turning away, and Roberts stalking him. There's the right foot, which goes on the back of his heel, and Ardias, like a bullfighter, is trying to avoid the ball, and with his hands out raised, he says to the referee, it was not me, ref, and it wasn't. Our deal is exonerated by James Hill, Esquire. 